Hi everyone and welcome back to this Ability System Series Part 19. In this part we're going to go through and fix a few bugs that have been found by myself and others too. So the first bug we have is if you change the ability to be an instant cast it won't actually cast and animate out of the character. So for example the fireball. So what I've done here is I've gone into my ability system here on projectiles and edited my fireball to be a cast time of zero seconds and in theory it should just fire out however we need to change something so to make it actually fire out what we need to do is go into actually let's show you the bug first of all if I click on here fire it doesn't do anything now the reason why it doesn't do anything is because of the way the animation set up with the notifiers so on the projectile ability projectile we got begin play and cast ability. Begin play is obviously starting as soon as the thing is spawned. So as soon as the fireball is spawned in the world, it does this. Okay. However, cast ability is also being cast pretty much at the same time because when we click on an ability set to cast without a cast time uh, here, it hasn't got a cast time. We're telling cast ability to happen at the same time as it being uh, created. So what we need to do is change it so the ability bypasses this stuff attached to the begin play and now attach it to this stuff on the cast ability. So for that we're going to right click and get the ability details. And you want to just split that open because you don't want to get hold of the cast time. And with that cast time you drag that out and check if it's not greater than uh, if it is sorry, if it is greater than a zero. That will go into a branch and be plugged in to the begin play. True will carry on as normal to the play montage on the begin play. But if it's false, it will go down to the bottom play montage there. We don't have to put it into the cast ability parent because we're already calling the cast ability. We don't need to do it twice. And that will allow you to send your fireball over instantly to your target. Like so. Okay, so at the moment it's not even homing. So the reason why it's not homing is because that begin play is being bypassed is because it's now not doing this stuff afterwards. So quite simply, after play montage on this on the cast ability here, just drag this over to homing and hit compile. And that will now make it home towards the target when it's instant cast. Like so. However, when doing this, we have now made another problem. The cooldown on our timers won't work. Again, this is tied down to how the animation system works and so forth. Uh, you get the same problem for all of your abilities now. So let's go through how that works. So the reason why it's doing that is because we've changed the way the cast ability is being called. So for example, on our... Uh, where is it? Ability, uh, cast ability. On cast ability, we're being recording this and telling it to call cast success. The issue we have with this is that it's happening pretty much immediately when it's being made. And if we go by our action bar slot UI, we're binding the cast success to the start cooldown. And basically, what's happening is it's not getting enough time to do the spawning and then the binding. It's, it's not having enough time to do that call. Basically, it's calling it before it's bound it. So what we need to do is go over to our ability and go to our event graph. And in here, I'm going to create a custom event and call it this one, uh, successful cast. And this successful cast is going to have a little delay on it. So a delay, 0.2 will be fine. And then you want to call your cast success event dispatcher. That will in turn trigger the cooldown on the button. So where do we call this? Well, we go to the cast ability function and rather than call cast success, we just drag our successful cast out and plug that in. Hit compile. And now we should have it so that when we use an ability, the cooldown begins. Our next bug is related to ability buff. Notice that when we call other uh, Abilities, the cooldown starts beginning and starts counting down. 
However, with the buff, if we apply this, notice it doesn't go down. So for that, we have to go into the ability buff actor and we have to use our successful cast function we just made. So at the end of cast ability here, because it's a custom cast ability, it's not using the same one as our previous uh, one we just fixed, we need to add in at the end our successful cast function. Hit compile and push play and that will now start the cooldown. Because it's calling that bind, that bound event, it will now start the cooldown. So our next bug is still with the ability buff. So if I were to hit play, notice that when I spend the buff here, it doesn't deplete its uh, cooldown, nor does it deplete the mana. So that is back on the ability buff. And on the cast ability, all that's missing is the uh, parent cast. So right click on the event and add call to parent function and just connect that up like so. Compile, play, and there it is. It takes away mana and starts to cool down. So our last bug we're gonna fix is on our mana spend. So to test this out, I changed my fireball cost here to 0.8 meaning it will take away 80% of all my mana. If I click on the enemy and cast a fireball, 80% is taken away. However, if I were to click on it again, it will cast a fireball, it will go a bit haywire because it's not finishing off correctly, but it shouldn't be doing that at all. Okay, it should be locking it off. It's only after we cast it, it's locked off. So how do we actually fix this? Well, we need our action bar to constantly check how much mana we've got and update the action bar accordingly. So let's go to our action bar UI. So in our action bar, we have uh, this update bars function, or event rather, which is updating our bars and our text to reflect the player's current state. We can actually use this same function here to update the availability of our buttons. Now our button slots are available to us already in the variable list here, but I'm gonna make them as an array for us to easier to pass through. So I'm gonna drag one out, get and from there do make array now you want to add all of them to an array so add as many pins as you need and just drag them onto it like that like that and like that oh missed one out And last one, seven. Okay, so now it gives us an array. We're gonna promote that to a variable. And this will be um, button array. And just connect that up to the end of your construct path. Then on the update bars, we're gonna come out of here and I'm gonna look where I've got mana here. So I've got mana normalized. That's good, we wanna use that. So I'm gonna move all this along and like so, and we'll just disconnect that for now actually. Because we're gonna do a for each loop through our button array. So drag your button array out, which should get, and do a for each loop. We're then gonna go through each of the buttons and determine whether or not we have enough mana to cast their ability. So first of all, we have to get the ability that's attached to them. So from the array element, we can come out there and get ability class. And you can come from there and get class defaults. That will give you uh, the ability details here. So you can right click on that and split that and get hold of finally the cost. Now we're going to compare that cost to our mana normalized here. So I'm just going to copy this and paste this over here. And on mana normalized, we're going to check whether or not the cost is uh, less than the mana normalized. So cost less than mana normalized. If it's less than the mana normalized, that means we have enough mana to cast it. So I'm now gonna put that into our set uh, is available. So on the ability here, or on the array element, drag this out and set is available. 
plug that into the loop body and connect these available up to that boolean. From that array element again, drag out and hit update its appearance. And that's a function we made previously on our slots. Next, we want to go and drag the array element here and we'll check if this thing is valid first of all. So is valid and use the question mark one, save us a bit of time. And it will only do this if it is valid. Basically, what it means is we're not going to get any errors then if it's an empty slot on the on the on the uh, slot array. If it's empty, then it's going to give you an error because it doesn't exist. But nonetheless, that will fix that for us. Uh, next, we're going to compile that and then go to our um, we'll go to the ability bar slot, and we're looking at the end cooldown here. So at the end cooldown, we want to call that basically that action bar to refresh and check whether or not we have the mana so on the action bar slot on end cooldown we're going to tweak this a little bit and we're going to get the player character cast to the third person character that's what we're playing as and the as third person character we can call the request to update the ui and that's an event dispatcher we made on our player character way back when. We can plug that in. Uh, we actually don't need these two uh, options here now because they are incorporated into the action bar refresh. So we've just got to plug that into our clear and invalidate timer by handle. So once we've done that, go back to action bar UI because uh, I forgot we also need to make this uh, valid check as well. So right click on this get here and convert to validate get and just plug that in. So we can actually use this instead of this is valid here because that was that would tick both boxes. So if that's valid, we'll go into there and that's it. Hit compile and let's test that out. So if I hit enemy with a fireball here, you see it's already grayed out the one that cost too much for my mana here, and it's grayed out the fireball now, and uh, stopping me from clicking on it to cast it again. But if I call this one. See now it grays out the rest as well. So let's uh, talk about how this actually works. So what's happening here is every time the mana or health changes, anything that happens with the UI changes, this bar will update and refresh. So that means if we have something in here which ticks the mana back up, you should see these slowly tick back on. So let's do that. So I'm going to go into my player character and add a simple mana regen to it. So let's go in here, event graph here. And we'll do a simple on begin play event. I don't think I've really got one here, so we'll begin play. We'll do a timer. So set timer by event. And this timer is going to be our tick, basically, a, glo a global cooldown ticking of the world. So we'll do a regen tick, we'll call it. Oh, sorry, not, not there, sorry. The regen tick will be the time, sorry, going mad. This will be, uh, let's do every two seconds. No, do one second. Do one second. That's looping. And the custom event that comes off of that will be called regen tick. There you go. And on the regen tick here, we're going to tell the max normalized. Get max normalized. And, or rather, let's uh, just do actually mana current and mana max. So what we're going to check is if the mana current is first of all less than the mana max. So check if that is less than, or uh, we'll just do less than, less than the mana max, and put that into a branch. And if that is the case, we're going to tell mana current to add a, a float, and we're going to add a mana max here and multiply that by 0.1. Uh, so it's going to gain 10% every second. So I plug that back in there. And then we set mana current. To here. But we may want to clamp this first of all. So let's clamp that. So it doesn't go above our mana max. And the max here is going to be mana max. So with that, we also need to update the mana normalized. So we can do normalize 
the range. Range minimum is zero, range maximum is the mana max. And then we're going to set mana normalized to that. So let's update all our variables on a regen tick. So hit compile and we can then after that call what we're doing here, the call request update UI, we can do that here as well. So request update UI call and that's it. So now let's see the mana ticking over. So every one second it gains mana. You can see the abilities pop back on. And fireball comes back more available when it gets more uh, mana. There you go. And that is it. So thank you very much uh, for following this tutorial series. And sorry it took so long to get around to fixing these bugs. But hopefully this helps you out a lot. And um, yeah, no, uh, let me know if you find any more bugs. And I'm happy to have take a look and try and fix them for you. Thanks very much for all my patrons for their continued support. As none of this would be possible without you guys. So thank you again so, so much. If you want to subscribe to my channel, please do hit subscribe. And you get access to all my videos as soon as they're released. Thank you so, so much. Other than that, have a good day. And I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys.